What I'll be talking about is the discrete time convolution and using this example how it illustrates uh, continuous time convolution as well as illustrating the concepts of linearity and time invariance. So let's say I have an arbitrary input x sub k is going and feeding into this system h sub k and that's our y of k. Now the relationship between x k, h sub k, and y sub k is a result of a discrete time convolution. k minus infinity to infinity we have x sub k, h sub n minus k, and we can also relate this to a continuous time case h sub t, x sub t, feeding in h sub t where this is our impulse response just like h sub k and y of t all a function of time but we can represent that with the convolution continuous time case convolution x sub tau h sub t minus tau d tau and you can see the similarity right here but let's start off with the discrete time convolution okay so let's say we have an input right here at zero with a height of one as our input and our corresponding output let's say that's four three two and one at zero one two and three so that's our out, uh, output as a result of this input so here we reserve that so that's our basically h sub k uh, our impulse response which is y of k for that single impulse okay but how about suppose let's say I delay my input by one another input let's say I delay it by one but I double it twice what do we expect the output to be so this is zero so this is one so we're looking only this there's no input this is just the axis in the height so this is just our x sub k right here and that's k k here and k where is that k here okay so our output if it's time invariant means that h sub k doesn't change with time then our output should be uh, delayed by one and doubled as well so therefore at so h sub k for this case it should double so here we should see an 8 a 6 a 4 and a 2 at 1 2 3 and 4 all right. Does everybody see that? Okay. So our output is delayed by one. Now let's say we have an input consists of two impulses now. Okay. So we have here at with a height of one, and another one at two. The one with a height of one is located at zero, and the other one with two is delayed by one. Now if the concept, if the system is linear that means we can break the input into two pieces one in here and one in here so this consists of two impulses one with an impulse located zero height of one and the other one located at one with a height of two so our output can be the sum of those two individual outputs one right here and one right here so we're going to add those two and we'll do it in tabular form so eight sub k at zero one two three and four and this is our input x sub k where k is equal to one k equals I mean zero first and uh, one so we're adding those inputs this is where we have four three two and one at starting at zero 
The other one is delayed by one, so we'll, but it's doubled, so it's eight, six, four, and two. Because of linearity, we can add these two. Four, eleven, eight, five, and two. Now we can see that we'll get the same result if we just follow the formula above. So for a time reverse version of x minus k, that would be four, three, two, and one. Okay. Negative one, negative two, negative three, and zero. And we're going to convolve this, okay, with this input at one and this at two. Now it's, this is at zero and this is at one. So we're going to see a table. So you can see four, that we're going to start getting an output when four and this one overlap. So that's four. Then we're going to see three and four overlaps with one and two. So that would be three plus eight. So that's eleven. Okay, because this is height has a height of two. And then two and three will overlap with one and two. So that would be two plus four equals uh, let me see, two and three. So that I'm sorry, this would be two and six. So that would be eight. And then one and two will overlap with one and two, but that'd be just one plus four is equal to five. Then one will overlap with two, and that would be just two times one, which is just two. So you could see that this four, eleven, eight, five, and two is the same as a result with this tabular form. So using the concept of time invariance and linearity, we get how the concept of YK, the discrete time convolution operation, is the same whether uh, we do it this method right here, where we break it up and using this tabular form right here, or using this discrete time convolution. So it's the same uh, idea. Now, if we can t take any arbitrary input, let's say, let me get an eraser, take this, get rid of that now. Let's see, where are you? Okay, let's see, get this eraser, get rid of that. Now. So if we take an arbitrary input, let's call that x sub t, we can decompose this into an infinite set whole bunch of impulse responses. When we decompose that, that's just a whole infinite set of uh, what do you call this? Uh, let's see. T minus K delta T. Tau, I'm sorry. So this is time with a weight of delta tau. That's the area underneath this curve. So we can take, take this infinite sum and it will result into this continuous time convolution. So we're just breaking up this arbitrary input, decomposing it into an infinite set of impulse, just like what we did here and here, okay? And adding up all the individual responses here and here. So we're just adding them all up, and you get the resulting output as y of t. And that, hopefully, this illustrates uh, the convolution a little bit better using the concept of time invariance and linear.